Uh, so I'm going to um, design a package here for the uh, Tektronix Curve Tracer. So this is a, um, a part that will hold a PC board on this side. And then uh, banana jacks will be on this side. And uh, yeah, there you go. So this is uh, designed in Fusion 360. And once you get this operating, um, you know, the drawing the way you want it, you um, go to the body. So there's a different body. So this is this is the uh, the body that I've just selected. You might have multiple bodies in your design. And then you do a right click and you say save as mesh. And it'll save it as a, uh, a 3MF mesh file. And then your uh, slicer for your uh, 3D printer can use it. All right, so this is the slicer I use. This is a Prusa slicer. So I've opened up the part into Prusa slicer. And you can see here that it's um, not not in a very good orientation for, for printing. So I'm going to have to flip it down. Uh, so I can say, I want to flip it down onto this face and it automatically puts it onto that face. Then I can say, now I want to move it over towards the center. And so there we go. So when you print this thing, it's kind of hollow inside, so you're going to need some support structure, otherwise it'll sag. So you can turn that on here, over here on the right, it says supports, support on the build plate only. So I've done that. So I'm going to say slice, and now it's sliced, and we can take a look at how it how it did that. So as it as, it, as it's building up, it's putting in, in the center of those green things. Those are the support structures that will allow the roof, basically, of this thing to uh, to not collapse in on itself. And so it creates some little, <clears throat> some little islands here. And then uh, the first, this first roof section, there's small enough gaps so it won't sag too much. And so then the, uh, uh, then the rest of the way it will uh, build it up. And uh, then you have the whole part. So that's the way 3D printing roofs. I put some little hex cutouts here to make the, sure the bananas don't rotate as you tighten them up. So. Um, yeah, there we go. So let's go uh let's go print it and see what happens. So uh, I've got the uh, posts in here. It looks, uh, looks very official. I put a chamfer on, uh, or uh, actually a radius on all of the corners, so it's a little, a little nicer to touch. And I've put in some holes here, so I can put in some 440 screws and add, add a top. So my goal in here is to have different tops, uh, some for TO5, TO. 18, uh, uh, TO-92s, that kind of thing. And uh, when I was at the store, I found these sockets, which I have never, never, ever seen before. So I'm gonna build one with just one of these sockets on top. And it's a very, very odd socket. I will I will hold the suspense until we get there, but it, it holds TO-3s and TO-66s both. Um, so those are super cool. Uh, but let's, uh, let's see if it, uh, if it fits in the machine here. Um, and there you go, perfect. Um, so, uh, now it's gonna be hard to get out. So the way that these, uh, these sockets work here is that there is a, a emitter-based collector, and that's what these three, uh, yeah, you don't have a very good angle on that. Let me move you a bit. So a collector, base, emitter, and um, so the base is the one that gets stepped. And when you're testing diodes, you just use these two, the collector emitter. Now these have Kelvin contacts too. They have um, a Kelvin contact for the, for the uh, collector. So the sense line goes back and the emitter, the sense line goes back. And that's if you're doing high current devices. So if you're doing high current devices, does it say how high a current these things go? Uh, collector. Let's see, vertical current, uh, let's see, where would you, where would I be reading that? Would be collector current, right? 
two amps. Yeah, two amps. So if you're drawing a large amount of current, then you can have drops before you get back to the measurement circuits. Now, between the collector and the collector sense and the emitter and the emitter sense is a 22 ohm resistor. So if you just have a socket like this, um, there's a 22 ohm in there that, that makes it work without you connecting up the sense lines. And for very, very low currents, like a device like this, you won't see any noticeable difference by having a, a Kelvin contactor just using their 22 ohm. But with something like 2 amps, yeah, there could be some, some uh, droppage in the, uh, in the sense lines. And so you, you sense directly where you're going to be applying the current here in the device. So uh, these two are the sense and these two are the regular ones. So, um, the socket that I'm planning on using also has Kelvin contacts if you want to. Um, so there's uh, these two are, are, are Kelvin here and these two are Kelvin, these two are Kelvin. So you could actually wire these up that like that if you want. But uh, yeah, all I need to do is make a, a little aluminum plate here and we'll just put, do point to point wiring on this one. I'm going to lay out a little circuit board for the other one though. I'm going to make it more generic, different, different types of sockets and stuff and have that as a printed circuit board that I plug onto the top of this thing. So I think that would be very nice.